Hi there, I'm Dr. Larson and today I want to talk a little bit about the color coding and the graph bars in AccuGraph and clear up a few questions that I've been getting. We'll start with a basic treatment. In AccuGraph, the bars are color coded to represent the state of each meridian. Red means excess, blue means deficient, purple means split, which is a left-right imbalance. And the typical way those are treated is to sedate what is excessive in this case, you see lung 5 is indicated, which is the sedation point of the lung channel. To tonify what is deficient, in this case, spleen 2 is indicated to tonify the deficient spleen. And when there's a split, you use the Luo point uh, to restore the balance between the left and right sides. In this case, gallbladder 37. And that's the basic treatment. But when we go to what's called the divergent channel protocol, we get a very different picture. And this is where things start to get confusing for some people. So we're going to clear that up. The points that are recommended in the divergent channel protocol are global points. They're not necessarily specific to any one meridian. So you see they're not lined up here under lung or under large intestine. Let's go ahead and add this set of points to our protocol. And you can see we have three color-coded areas. We have the red background, the green, and the yellow. The red background deals with left and right divergences, and it uses only back shoe points. That one's pretty straightforward. We're not going to deal with that today in this video. So we'll just eliminate those from the discussion. That leaves us the yin-yang divergences shown in green and the extraordinary vessel divergences shown in yellow. Let's begin with the yin-yang divergences shown in green. As you can see, there are color-coded points and sides. So it's telling us that we're going to treat spleen 9 on the left, and the color is the color that you treat. In this case, you're going to put a black clip on it because it is shown in blue. Then stomach 2 on the left also, you're going to put a red clip on. So you're going to be moving chi from spleen 9 to stomach 2. Same thing you're going to do with liver. You're going to be moving from liver 8 on the right to gallbladder 1 on the right. So those are the two pairs that you will hook up, and that's the way you'll hook them up using the ion pumping cords. This is where people start to get confused because they look at spleen 9 and they say, wait a minute, spleen is deficient, and you're telling me to pull energy from spleen, but it's deficient. Shouldn't I be putting energy into spleen? And the answer would be yes if this was about the spleen. But the fact is, what we're doing right here has nothing to do with the spleen channel itself. What's going on right here is treating or addressing a yin-yang divergence between spleen and stomach. And the way that it's addressing it is by using the Hussey point on the deficient channel. The Hussey point of the spleen is, of course, spleen 9. And then it connects it to a master point of the opposite in the yin and yang, in this case a master point of stomach being stomach 2. With liver, we have the Hussey point being liver 8. It is the more deficient between liver and gallbladder. And then it's connecting to gallbladder 1, a master point for the wood. And so the question is, why are we moving in the direction we're moving? Why are we moving from spleen into stomach and from liver into gallbladder? And the answer has to do with direction. The way that this protocol was designed originally by its developer, uh, Tadashi Iri, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, is to always move the chi upward. But upward is specific to the anatomical position of traditional Chinese medicine, which means that the hands are held above the head. So if you picture the person standing in anatomical position, now you can see here, we tend to show these meridians in what is considered the anatomical position of Western medicine because it's frankly easier to illustrate and easier to fit in the screen, and that is with the arms down, palms forward. But the anatomical position of Chinese medicine has the arms above the head. Therefore, when we go back to the graph and we look at the treatment protocol, and I seem to have lost a couple of points there. We'll add them back in, remove those. When we go back and we look at the treatment protocol, we can see that we are moving upward from spleen 9 up to spleen 2, and we're moving upward from liver 8 
up to gallbladder one. And this will always hold true. If the arms are above the head, then it will do the opposite. It'll take points on the face and move upward to the arms. And so it will always be sedating what is below and tonifying what is above or moving upward. And that's why the polarity is set the way it is. It's not specifically trying to tonify the spleen channel. It's trying to harmonize the conjunction between spleen and stomach or between liver and gallbladder by moving chi upward. So these colors shown in the treatment plan represent how to treat. They don't necessarily represent the condition of the meridian. You could see spleen nine here shown in blue, or you could alternatively see it shown in red, and that doesn't necessarily mean that spleen is either deficient or excessive or anything in particular. If you look here at liver eight, you see that liver is shown as normal, and yet we're still treating liver, and that's because what we're treating is the balance, the confluence between liver and its paired meridian gallbladder. Same with spleen and stomach. So that takes care of the yin-yang divergences shown in green, and that's why it's not always going to match what you're thinking of about tonifying and sedating individual meridians. Just remember, in the divergent channel protocol, you are not treating individual meridians. You're treating the system, which is going to mean you're going to move chi in a completely different way than if you were doing a basic Rotoraku treatment. Now, with that in place, let's talk about up here in the yellow. This is the extraordinary vessel divergences. And as you can see in these, there's only actually three points showing. And that's unusual. Normally there will be four, but sometimes there's three. And I chose this example specifically because there are only three points. In this case, the way you would pair them up is lung seven to spleen four, black clip on lung seven on the right, red clip on spleen four on the left, and then also lung seven to kidney six. That would be black clip on lung seven on the right, again, so two clips on that needle, and red clip on kidney six on the left. Now the logic behind what's being treated here has to do with the extraordinary vessels. Lung seven, is master point for the Ren. And here we have Ren that is out of balance with the Chong. And the Chong is, its master point is spleen four. And so we're rebalancing Ren and Chong by using lung seven and spleen four. But Ren is also out of balance with the Yin Chao. Therefore, we have to rebalance uh, Ren and Yin Chao using lung, lung seven and kidney six. So in this case, you're only, you're, you're only going to have three and you're going to use lung seven twice. And that's the logic behind what's going on here. Whenever you're dealing with the extraordinary vessel divergences, you will always be using the master points of the extraordinaries and balancing them that way. So again, don't think of the individual channels that you see here. Don't think that you're treating lung and that you're treating spleen by using lung seven and spleen four here. You're not you're actually treating the extraordinaries that are represented by these master points. So the take home from today's little discussion is simply this. If you hook it up the way that it shows here, paying attention to the color and the side, you'll get the treatment right every time. And remember the colors that are shown here are only the colors of the clips. They have nothing to do with the colors of the meridians or color coding, whether a meridian is excessive or deficient, that is not represented here at all. Treatment is different than demonstrating what is showing diagnostically for the meridians. So remember, use the clips the way it shows, just match them up, hook it up step by step, and you'll get great results. I hope you find that helpful. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help.